Hey, my name is Cindy and this is my new series Forever Fit which is for 65 up. Anyone can do it. 65 and up is, is who I focus with because I'm going to be joint friendly. You can add weights so if you want to add weights you can get some resistance tubes or you can get some actual dumbbells or kettlebells and go as light or as heavy as you want to. I'm going to do the entire first round with zero weight. I will show you how to use weights on the second round. You will need a chair, absolutely need a chair. This is not an option. It needs to be sturdy enough to move and use. And uh, an open wall area, or I have a credenza here, which you can see, which is really solid. Nothing's moving it. Everything we do is broken down into one minute intervals. Go ahead and get ready. I need you to get your chair, and I need you to just sit in the chair. We're gonna start our very first move. It is a bench squat or a sit to stand. We're gonna start now. So sit up. Come back down it's that simple or is it what I need you to do is I need you to send your weight back sit into the chair you keep moving I'm gonna demo and talk so I'm just gonna turn in a diagonal when you sit in your chair you have a strong seat your feet are underneath your knees hips lined up with the knee joints when you come forward you press up out of your chair you sit back with ease so I don't want you to seat come up and then I don't want you to just fall back into the chair so you're gonna have as much control on the return to your chair as you come up. Your knee should stay fairly lined up with your ankle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you are gonna get a little bit of alignment. So I'm gonna bring this back. We're still in our one minute. So one minute of movement, you can count or not. If you count, use it to make sure you're doing the same amount on that second round, if not more. All right, we're coming to the end of that one minute and we have a 20 second transition. We have seven exercises. Turn your chair to the side, because now we're gonna use this as a balance beam, ballet bar, whatever you need to call it. We're gonna use this, stand up nice and tall, pull the belly in, soften the knee you stand on, pull the knee up. I don't care how high it goes, we're gonna extend the leg and come back in. Extend the leg and come back in. If that is absolutely too much for you, have a seat. Have a seat, extend the leg, Come back and keep the knees level. So don't let it drop down. If you're struggling with that, you might need to just do heel touch to lift. You decide, what can you do? We're gonna stay here for 30 seconds. We'll switch to the other side. That switching time is coming up. Not there yet. And now, switch sides as quick as you can, getting your form in. So we're not gonna go fast skipping the importance of form. But we're just not gonna dilly dally. So belly pulled in, leg extends. I don't care if your knee can stay up high. If you are arching your back or shifting back to keep your leg high, you are not getting what you need to get done here. If the knee has to be dropped down, I'm gonna diagonal. If the knee has to be dropped down for your extension, so be it. If you cannot keep it up and extend, it doesn't happen, done. Let's rest. So we do not need the chair for this next one. We are gonna use body weight, and again, on the second round, I'll show you how you can use weight on a couple of the moves. Not all the moves are gonna have an opportunity. Get in this position, fingertips touch the head, other arm reaches down. We're gonna to go to the side, opening up our side body, come up, neutral. All the way down, find that sideways, bend, and come up. So we elongate, contract to come up. I do not wanna see this. Forward, no, this is not what we're doing, we're not coming forward. You're literally going sideways, and I know so many people knew, knew this, know this. I usually call this the teapot move because I'm a little teapot. Yep, we all know this move. Short and stout, let's switch sides. Literally nothing changes but the hands. We reach the fingers down towards the knee and come up. I also don't care if you can touch the knee. I do care if you're doing this. See how my hips are moving? No. Waistline, waistline. That's it. Nice purposeful movements. So even though we're gonna move through the routine at a nice little clip, we don't rush to the actual exercises. We're coming to the end of this one and we get a 20 second break. Next one also, we'll have an option for weights on the second round, but for this first round, no. This is called a good morning. Fingertips touch behind the head, pull the elbows back. If that's too much on your shoulders, put your hands behind your back, all right? 
palms open. What you're gonna do is soften the knees. We're gonna hinge at the hip that's closing like a door, like a, a door on a um, cabinet. We're gonna come forward with a lifted spine. We're gonna squeeze the bum to come up. So when we come down into our good morning, we feel a stretch in the back of the legs. We're gonna squeeze the butt to come up. The reason we're doing this is we're gonna activate our glutes. What happens is whenever we bend forward, we give, we give out, we go, and we slump and we fold into this. No, this stays open and very rigid. Everyone knows what a plastic Barbie doll looks like, right? Barbie, oh, she does a great Romanian deadlift or straight leg deadlift, which are good morning, which is what we're doing. So she has nice, almost straight legs, a little bit of a bend. She hinges only at the hip joint. Her torso and chest stays open the entire time. And that's what you're gonna do. We're coming into the last couple seconds of this. We can probably squeeze in one more, so do it. We don't quit early. And we are done. All right, this is gonna be the hardest move that we do today. It is a push-up. We are not on the floor. You're not even using your chair because I don't trust them. We're gonna use a solid surface. So a wall, go up to the wall, and you're just gonna um, come up on the ball of your feet, feet are wide, and lean in. I'm gonna use my credenza because it is so heavy and sturdy, it is not going anywhere. Everyone's legs are wide. Everyone's hands are chest level. So don't put your hands up high and come in. Have them right around your chest. So yes, your head, forehead would come to the wall first. In my case, my chest is gonna come towards the edge of the credenza first. You might need to rotate your palm to make sure your wrist is happy with what's happening. You wanna move your entire body as a unit, not just your upper body. Take your hips with you. Your hips going with you is what's gonna make you heavy and make this the hardest move we're gonna do. So if you think this is the easiest move you're gonna, that we're doing, you have the option, or oh, maybe you don't, if you don't have a nice strong credenza like I do, to go a little lower. You also could um, go against a railing, as long as the railing is trustworthy. I don't always trust this new construction, so <laughs> that's me. All right, you're almost coming to the end of this one minute of movement. And then we're gonna stand. We got a 20 second break. It doesn't feel like a long time, but that's all we're gonna use. So moving from point A to point B, that's where we're quick. Once we're in the minute of work, we pay attention to form. This next move is gonna be arm circles. That's it. Make sure the back of your chair is in anything you can knock with your hand. Hold your hands down at your sides. Everyone, palms down, arms up. Tiny circles, pick a direction, doesn't matter. Just pick a direction. We're just gonna relax the neck and shoulders. So don't hold your, your shoulders up high. That's what I meant by relax. And you're just gonna slightly make them bigger. Now the bigger the circle, the slower the, the speed. Now you're starting to make them a little bit bigger. I'm gonna call these small to medium. Now get into medium. Remember, the bigger the circle, the slower you move. Get into your biggest circle yet. Biggest circle yet. If you can't do this big, don't. Go in the other direction. We're gonna stop. Big circles going in the other direction. Remember, when it's big, it's really slow. We're gonna start to bring them into that slightly medium. Medium circle. You can slowly speed up, and then we're gonna get into small medium. And then we're gonna make them our small ones when these are our fastest circles. Don't worry, we've got that last five seconds here. The tiniest circles get the fastest ones, and release. Woohoo! Now someone might argue that that was the harder move. All right, next move. We got 20 second transition. This is a balance move. You are more than welcome to stand behind your chair or put your chair to your side. I want you to have it there. I don't want you to use it unless you need it. We're gonna go onto one leg. It's like the leg extension, softness in the knee, lift up tall, I want your hips level. I don't want your hip dropping down. We're holding on one leg, that's it. If you need to hold like be close to tap, that's fine. Close to tap, put your toe down to tap, that's fine. Do not hold. Do not hold on to it, because then you're not balancing. I want the workload in the soft tissue of the standing leg. It's your ankle, knee, and hip, soft tissue, as long as the muscles in that whole thing. The core is gonna help hold you up tall throughout the rest of the body. Eek, that's the noise I make when I'm falling. Switch. <laughs> Other side, we go there quick. We go there quick, there's no transition between the two. And we hold that balance in the other leg. So, also, no hooking. No attaching one leg, one foot to the other leg. That leg is free form. I don't care where it is, I don't care how you hold it, you're holding it. You pick that 
hip stays lifted so the hip bones are leveled the same way you would be if you were standing up, which is why you need to bend the other leg. And done. All right, so there's a 30 second transition between round one and two. I will demo some weight if you wanna add weights. Um, I'll demo a couple different ones. Some of them, obviously, there's gonna be no uh, weight at all. If you need a drink of water, this is also a time to do that. We have about 10 seconds and then we're gonna get started. If you're gonna use a weight, get it now and have a seat on your chair. This is our sit to stand bench squat. Um, get that weight close to the body if you're using a weight. If not, body weight. Sit back, controlled. Come up, push through your heels to stand. Keep the weight close to your body. I don't want weights coming way out here. It's gonna pull you out, make your neck and shoulders and your upper trap work more, your upper trap and neck. That's your, um, you have an upper and a lower trap. It's in the upper back half of your neck, up behind your ears, down into um, the top of your neck right here, and then just below it. You got a couple other things going on in there, but whenever this is out here, extended it's too much for the neck i just need you heavier if you choose to use weights you don't need weights you can get a lot out of it if not if you find this seriously easy grab a weight i have a 10 pound weight so it's just adding 10 pounds to me and i keep moving we're coming to the last five seconds we only stop when the timer ends which is now and you can put your weight down and now we're going to do those leg extensions remember you can sit or you could stand. Don't make this a balance move because it's not. I need you focusing on using the core to hold the knee high. When you make this a balance move, you lose on the strength work. Soften the knee, pull the belly in, pull that leg up as high as it'll go. Use your core, your belly, pull in, extend and release. Extend and release. Now, when I do this as a balance challenge, I only do like three, two to three. But because we are doing a higher repetition, I, I don't want this to be about balance because what will happen is you'll lose that pull of your abdominal wall and you'll start to arch your back and overuse your hip flexor. Always we're using the hip flexors, obviously. Switch sides, it's quick, don't dilly-dally. This is one of those ones where you're like, now I'll get a drink, nope. Nope, stay in here, this is a 20 minute workout. It is going to go by very fast. We're gonna get in seven exercises twice, that's 14. It's a wonderful workout in a short amount of time because we're going to stay focused. And I know sometimes folks think this is a little too fast. This is how the world moves. The world moves fast. We're going to move fast with it, but not the exercise. Ready? Done. All right, 20 second break. Our next move is our teapot side, basically standing core. So if you're going to use a weight, you only need one. You're gonna stand up in that teapot position. You do not need a weight at all. Fingertips behind the ear, soften the knees, pull the belly in. We're gonna come down laterally, coming down towards the side, come back up. Because our fingertips are extended, you may not reach as low. Don't force it. Don't shift the hips. This isn't a hip move. This is all waistline. So we're just gonna use that oblique and that lateral side body core to extend to the side and come up. Extend to the side, come up. We're almost done with this side. Last one, and then we'll switch. Remember, we don't dilly-dally on this. We dilly-dally in our rests. We go right into it once we get into the form, and we move. Keep going. So the side that's working is not the side holding the weight. All right, so if you're pushing the knee down, trying to, how can, I, how can I get the hand down to the knee, not the knee, pushing the hand down to the knee. You're missing the point. You're just simply opening and contract close. This is your last one on this side, and we'll put this weight down, only for our break. We're gonna go into a, a good morning, Romanian deadlift now that I've added a weight. All right, so if you're gonna use a weight, you can get two small dumbbells, one dumbbell, if you're gonna hold two, or one, hold on the outside edges, palms face, and you're gonna come down into your good morning. So obviously your hands aren't gonna be behind your head or behind your back. Now what happens when you hold a weight is you cave and you round. Look how awful that form is. Oh, I wanna yell at myself. Pull the chest open, keep that back straight. Squeeze the bum to come up. 
Keep this chest lifted. You feel the hamstring stretch. Squeeze the bum to come up. Another thing you can do if you had a small weight is put one hand behind your back to help remind you to keep that good lifted chest, that straight back. And you could do a couple on one side and a couple on the other side. Because why do I tell you this like there's a future? Yeah, I'm expecting you to do this again someday. Doesn't have to be tomorrow, but maybe once a week. Once a week added with some of the other videos I do, good well-rounded workout. We are coming to the end of this move. This is our final three seconds. And done, we got a transition time of 20 seconds to rest. We're gonna go to our wall for our wall push-up. The only way to make this heavier or harder is to make you heavier and get lower. So I'm using a credenza, pretty high I think for a push-up works for me because it's a whole minute you don't need high weight and by all means if you need to get down on the floor and do a push-up make sure your form is good feet are a little wider than your hip pull the belly in lift up on high on the toes come in if you're on the wall your forehead could easily gently touch make sure you're not pushing your chin forward a lot of people do that in fact I think I'm actually um, very likely to have done that in the past why because you're just like oh I'll get my face in there don't make your neck do that extra work send the chest in come back I know I'm going off screen it is what it is it is what it is I'm not here to offer you a perfect <laughs> viewing you know digitally performed workout I'm here to give you a very well orchestrated very effective workout and those of you who know me know that I know what I'm talking about <laughs> so anyone who's new to me welcome keep going take the whole body with you we're not going to leave the hips back and just make this upper body. Making the heavy comes from taking the lower body. And we're done with that. All right, 20 seconds break. This is where you get your drink, you wipe your brow, and we get ready for the next move. This is our arm circles. No weights. No weights. If you're super, super strong, your weights are way under five pounds. Way under. So if you want to grab a one or two pound weight, you can. Start out wide. Start with your small circles. I still don't think you need weights on this, never, like your leg extension, I don't think we ever need weights. Small to medium, so getting a little bit bigger and they're starting to slow down. And then we'll go to medium. Make sure you're going forward and back. A lot of people do this out here. You're literally going forward and back, getting the whole body involved. Right, oh, let's see, I don't know if it's whole body, but <laughs> you're not moving just in the front of your body. Get as big as you can. And then we're going to go in the other direction. So stop. Big circles in the big other direction. Remember, you are slow when the circle is big because for control, because it's a bigger range of motion, more likely to hit a problem. Start to shrink it down a little. And as you shrink it down, you know your arm can handle that range of motion. It's easier to get a little smaller, get really small. Start to get into that tiny one where it's nice and quick. No, I just don't think you need weights for this. And done. Woohoo! Shake it out. All right, we're coming up to our final move. This is our balance move. Anything you need to balance on, make sure it's sturdy. I do have a fairly light chair, but I also have high balance. So if you do not have high balance, you need a really strong chair. Pick a leg. Get the other leg in position. Hips are up. I don't want one hip dropped down. Lift them up. Have it here to need if you need it to use, do not rely on it because if you rely on it, you're not balancing. If you absolutely cannot balance without relying on it, please just do a, a fingertip press. Just press the hand into it. But try to get the leg to do the work to get the balance. You are not looking for perfection, but you are looking for the challenge. Switch sides. You go right to it. And your other leg can be anywhere that works for you. Everyone will argue one is better. I just don't want you touching, hooking, or wrapping because that is not going to make this leg work harder. That is not an advanced position. So do not hold. I just held while I went around and showed you all those different positions. Don't hold on if you don't have to. Ready? And done. All right. So listen, that was it. So final 30 seconds of this 20 minute workout is us patting ourselves on the back, high fives around the room if you did this with a friend. So this is what you're gonna expect in Forever Fit. Body weight, lightweight option for um, support. 
It will be slightly modified, if not fully modified movement patterns because I need you to protect your joints. It doesn't mean you can't use them, it just means we're gonna protect them. So take the time to go slow within the movements and have a great day. I'll see you on your next workout.